Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet. Welcome to another Got That Gurgling Sound. What was that? Was that I, me or you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> As I heard it, I was like, is that coming from me? <laughs> I had my mouth open, so it is possible. <laughs> it sounded like a sad Chewbacca. <laughs> like, that's how we opened this episode. Just, <laughs> Hi, for, for Harambe. <laughs> welcome, welcome to our stomach noises. Dicks out for Harambe. <laughs> that was the sound of a dick coming out. Uh, Tap Hog Podcast show that happens twice a week where two old guys with failing digestion play uh, old, interesting games. Yeah. Yeah. This is it's an older game, what it's based off of. Tyler and Dave play games based on memes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. All right, you're burping, so I'm going to guess yep. that it was your stomach yeah, noise. Yeah, probably escaped. so. And now that's captured, it's like eternally captured in audio format. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. That's... My, my snuck when I was sick. And... <laughs> you can bring this recording to your physician in the future. <laughs> What's wrong with right? me? Yeah. Why am I dying? Look, no, seriously, though, doctor, we don't have enough <laughs> listens. If you could just <laughs> if give you us... in the whole office. You can send it off yeah. to be checked. Right. Don't forget to rate and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So this week you had an idea for it, or not an idea, but you had a suggestion for a game yeah. that you had seen. Yeah. I, this is super recent. I had seen this. <laughs> I think I, like a four days ago, I was like, hey, there's a Harambe video game, mm-hmm. which is Harambe <laughs> versus Capcom. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. It's free. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to play it. So, I guess everybody probably knows who who Harambe is. Who who is Harambe? Who is Harambe? I played this entire game, but I don't know who he is. Who is he? Harambe, I don't know where the zoo was. Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Cincinnati Zoo. But I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh a a child managed to get in the gorilla enclosure. Um, he did a lot of work to get there. Uh-huh. <laughs> I I read the Wikipedia entry. He says, "I want." He says something like along. Well, uh, eyewitness said something like he said he wanted to go in there, and then they go through the steps that he took to. He climbed like a four foot fence. This is a three year old. He was a three year old <laughs> boy. He climbed like a four foot fence. Went through like two feet of weeds and then fell fifteen feet into the moat. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're telling this, not me. No, you, you know more about that than I do. I didn't know all that. Because uh, he got into the gorilla enclosure with Harambe. Yeah. And I don't think Harambe fucked him up, but he... He definitely fucked he him He tossed though. him around. He, yeah, he did. <laughs> I mean... He's like, oh, mm, mm-hmm, Yeah. Mm-hmm. These other two female gorillas, they, they are tired of this. <laughs> However, this boy's got a lot of spirit. Climbed a long way to see old Uncle Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> Make it worth your while, son. That's good. I'm impressed. So I guess he, because um, it was a whole thing about getting the kid out safely, and they did, but right. I guess since the gorilla, I guess it's rules that when animals do anything to humans, they're put down. It was a, uh, I didn't expect to actually know all the stuff. Uh, <laughs> They, uh, the director of the Cincinnati Zoo had to make the call mm-hmm. uh, to kill, take the shot, take the shot on the gorilla um, while the kid was still there. I mean, like, yeah. Oh, I didn't know what happened like while they were there. Uh, from what I understand, I wasn't there myself, mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, according to my credible, credible source, Wikipedia, mm-hmm. which journalists all over the world use mm-hmm. um, and college students. Um, that's what happened. Because I, I didn't him. know this happened at all until I was scrolling through Facebook, and I kept seeing pictures of a white gorilla, 
and then with the caption like, if Harambe had been this gorilla, would he have been <laughs> shot? I saw that all over the place. Like, what is this? Before I had to delve in and find what it was based on. Um, or an albino gorilla, I should say. I happened to see, I happened to catch this on Reddit because when the day it happened, because I remember Reddit exploded, the front page of Reddit exploded mm-hmm. as it was happening or, or, or moments afterwards. Because, like, I remember seeing that, like, um, footage that was shot on someone's iPhone or whatever. Um, and it's like, I couldn't watch it. I'll be honest with you. I still haven't watched it because it's like now that I um, have an almost two year old, I get really, I got to watch. I It's weird, man. Like I got to be careful about what I watch because I get like weirdly emotional now. Mm-hmm. Like I saw something on the news um, last week of like this family who like OD'd in their car while their kid was in their car seat. So like they had this, they have this like still image. Actually, no, it's not a still image. It just seemed like it because there were two dead people in the front, <laughs> uh, with like their mouths gaping open. They look like ghouls from like the Fiend Folio <laughs> or something, and they're all slumped over in their seat. And then there's just a kid in the in the back seat in his car seat with his face blurred, just like moving around, looking confused as fuck. And Ooh, it's like, oh man, like that was like a fucking day ruiner. It was like, thank you. Thank you, Nightly News, for like fucking just destroying the day that I just had because I'm not going to get that. I still don't have that image out of my mind. Well, I was reading something, I don't think it was on Reddit, but about how actually really high and common it is for cops to pull over a, a DUI charge on a parent while a kid is in the backseat in the car seat. Really? It's like common? it's incredibly common. Where yeah. did you see that on Reddit? I think it was, I think it was a face. I don't know where the article was, but I saw it on Facebook. Shit. So how much credibility that gives it? Was Kermit the Frog drinking tea at the top of this article? <laughs> uh, but I can't. Was I just saw still images from uh, Pet Cemetery and seeing the little kid bent over to pick up the ball and the truck coming. Yeah, that hit me in a way it never had before. I was like, oh fuck, because that kid's about kid of size. Yeah, I remember my. I remember watching that movie with my dad, oh. Pet Cemetery, and I remember he got weird around that. The beginning, because that happens kind of early on mm-hmm. in the movie. Yeah. Mm. That's how I know my daddy loves me. Yeah. He got upset when a, <laughs> a child got He got upset over. at your theoretical death. <laughs> right. All right, Dad. All right. We're uh, cool. We didn't, we didn't play around semi-trucks anymore after that, weirdly <laughs> enough. Or go to any more pet cemeteries. I, I've never been to the Northeast. <laughs> <laughs> All pets just left in the sun to rot. Not a single one That's buried. right. Yeah. We just, we don't even put <laughs> them in shoeboxes. Okay, here's what we say here our house words. Leave it where it lies, David. <laughs> we have one rule in my house, and that is flush all dead pets. <laughs> uh, the food processor gets a lot of use. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, man. So, okay, let's get... what. So you you disagree with... What What was the... What was the uh, Reddit's in an uproar. Yeah, Reddit was in an what, uproar. What was the other option... Of uh, remedying the situation. So, like, some people say that I'm, by the way, I'm just going to go ahead. We need to, like, include in our disclaimer at the beginning that we're not fucking experts on anything we mm-mm, talk about. Mm-mm. So, like, I don't even want to hear the corrections. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> like, on Harambe, I, I may be getting things wrong. But from what I understand, um, experts said after the fact that... Uh, Harambe, like it, it, you couldn't have tranked him. You couldn't like like shooting him was like the only option you you had because a trank would have taken too long or supposedly getting that dosage correct or it could have just it killed him anyway. Uh, so um, yeah, I, from what I have heard, once again, not a gorilla expert. Uh, there will be a quiz later. Like not however. a gorillist. <laughs> not a gorillist. <laughs> I meant to tell you before we started recording to prepare for a quiz. There will be one. <laughs> okay, so good. Now, now you can like mentally, <laughs> <laughs> mentally do that as we record. Um, but yeah, the Cincinnati uh, Zoo director made the decision that, that Harambe had to had to be shot, had to be mm. shot, and Harambe was it was the gorilla was killed and in, in one shot. Yeah, well, at least I had somebody's the, the good old good old zoo sniper, right? <laughs> Yeah, um, it would have been, oh, bad. Oh, that would have been bad if it had taken like four or five. <laughs> just like, <laughs> we, we got Betty. Shit. 
<laughs> Fuck. <laughs> well, that wasn't even a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I lot of my resume. I'm not very good at this. I am not a sharpshooter. <laughs> I thought like Sue Sniper, yeah. who's gonna ever they're never gonna call me up. <laughs> I'm pretty drunk right now. I've worked at the cookie factory before here. <laughs> I felt <laughs> Um So yeah, that's the story that's the story of Harambe. Um the, this game, Harambe versus Capcom, mm-hmm. uh doesn't have its own Wikipedia entry, but it does have a sentence in the killing of Harambe Wikipedia entry. <laughs> yeah. Which I'll have a link to that in the show notes. <laughs> do we want to do who we are? Do we want to do that? Oh, um, I'm your weird host, Tyler, and that was talking about Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> I am your bespectacled host, Dave. And do you mind if I pause for just a moment, the Harambe talk? Because mm-hmm. uh, something interesting happened to me a couple nights ago. Okay. That I'd like to share. Please I haven't do. told you the story no. yet. Um, first of all, let me go ahead and type in the killing of Harambe in the show notes to remind myself. Uh, I ca- I drank this LIT in memory of Harambe. Yeah. I think you need to, you're supposed to pour it out here. Let me pour out. I'll open pour my out in my mouth. I'll pour out my monster ultra black in memory of Harambe. I hope you don't mind. Your carpet, no, no, it's your fine. carpet looks nice. It's, it's for, it's for Harambe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're doing it for Harambe. I've actually, you know how like, uh, baristas will make like, uh, art out of the foam. I'm going to make, I'm going to make a cherry stained Harambe face on your carpet. And when, whenever I sell it on the disclosure, like, Bedroom does have a Harambe face. <laughs> Don't worry. Very, what was in memory of Harambe? Please do not clean. Call the news and just say it showed up on the floor. <laughs> I woke up and then all of a sudden Harambe's <laughs> face was on the floor. I think he's trying to communicate with us. Then, dude, we could skyrocket in fame. Then we could just do the Harambe cast. We're the Harambe boys. Every, har, the Harambe <laughs> boys. Oh, 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 oh. Every episode of uh, Harambe Boys, we it's actually just an hour where we hold a seance and talk to Harambe. <laughs> it is literally the easiest podcast we well, possibly Once do. we make contact, podcast ends. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, brief Harambe break. Um, I have been playing Pokemon Go still. Um, mm-hmm. I know it's down some members, like uh, just like a paltry 10 million mm-hmm. <laughs> players. But I I'm, still play too. I I'm love still it. playing this game. And... So I work during the day, and then two nights a week, I record this show with you, Tyler. I'm not sure if you're aware that that's a thing that I do. Oh. Um, And then other nights, I uh, stream on Twitch. So like my my Pokemon Go Prime playing, my window to play this this game is typically after 11 o'clock. So... What happened was we recorded last weekend, we recorded an episode, I went home, I edited the episode, I scheduled the episode to post, I got it all ready to roll, and then uh, Nikki was going to sleep, and I said, good night, I'm going to go play Pokemon Go, and she said, okay, have fun, and it's about, it was about 11.30 when I left, I got in the car, and uh, I need those gems. I got I to gotta take those gems because I need those poke coins mm-hmm. so that I can yeah. buy incubators so that I can be in- all, always incubating. That's my rule. That's what I do. That's what you have to do. I There's can't... no way to get trust rare me. Pokemon without Trust it. me, yeah. I know. I don't have many rare Pokemon. It's because I'd never have enough incubators. Um, although I did hatch a Lickitung today. So that's the second Lickitung that Damn. I got. I caught one and then out of, I hatched out of what, another one. 10K egg? Five. Oh, I don't, dude. I don't get ten k eggs, but I'm, I'm, I can, I can. Oh, oh, I'm using the force. I'm, sen- I'm using Harambe, uh, my Harambe telepathy. I am sensing about half our audience fast forwarding through my Pokemon Go talk. <laughs> oh, wait, the other half are complaining about me talking about Pokemon <laughs> Go. All right, so I'll, enough with that. Um, I so I have to go to the gyms to get Poke coins. Mm-hmm. Gems are typically in public places, like historical markers, uh, stuff like that. Also, another big uh, gem point is churches. Yep. Almost every church in Paducah is a gem, give or take. A gem or a Pokestop, yeah. Or a stop, right. So what I did uh, this past Sunday night was go from church to church taking the gems. I pulled into uh, a church... And it was it was taken by Team Yellow, and I was gonna take it for Team Blue. 
And I pull into the parking lot, uh, get all nestled up next to the church, and I turn my car off. The moment I turn my car off, I see headlights pull up behind me. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what the fuck? And it's like, I I mean, they are like right behind me, like wait, like really close. Uh, So I noticed that in my rear view, I haven't even started, like this was instantaneous. Um, I hadn't even started taking the gym yet. I kind of look up from my phone in my rear view and I'm like, lights? And then I can see that it's a cop car. And it's like, oh, okay. Um, And they sit there for like a, a few seconds. And I'm like, well, they're running my plates. They have to be running my plates. Yeah. So I'm like, Ugh. what do I do? Like, do I like... Bye. <laughs> right. No, no. I mean, they blocked me in. Like, I mean, like I was blocked. Oh my God. Like, they weren't... Like, they were that close. They were not letting me leave. Um, so I'm blocked in by uh, this police car, and I know they're running my plates. And so I'm like, I'm going through my op- the options in my mind. I'm like, well, do I get out of the car... And I was like, no, absolutely not. I don't get out of the car. I'm just going <laughs> to... What the fuck know, is going right? on? <laughs> that is probably like not what the police want. So I'm just going to wait here. I'm going to check my white privilege. What the fuck are you doing blocking me in? <laughs> I bet y'all going to do me like Harambe. <laughs> uh, so I'm sitting there and I'm like, well, I guess I just wait. Uh, and then, I, I mean, it is like th- it takes like 20 to 30 seconds and then... Two policemen get out of the car. They flank my car. They're on either side. They both have flashlights oh, that they're shining in my car as as they come up. And so, like, they get they get on either side, and I roll the window down, and the the, the policeman's like, "What are you doing here?" And I just hold up my phone and show up with my screen. I'm like, "I'm just here to take this gym." <laughs> and uh, he started laughing. <laughs> <laughs> He started laughing and he goes, okay, uh, let me see. You got an identification? Uh, yeah, I've got identification. <laughs> so I hand them my driver's license. They run that. Um, he gives it back to me and he says, man, you really freaked us out. You really freaked us out. And I, I was just kind of like thinking, I didn't want to like, I didn't want to. I didn't want to start anything. I didn't feel like going to jail. We were blowing each other and you just pulled yeah, up here and you freaked us out. It's like, what what was going on? Because it's like, I wasn't there for very long. I wasn't playing loud music. I was like, my windows were up. My headlights were on. Like, I wasn't, I didn't like speed through the parking lot and do a donut. It was like quarter till midnight at a church. Um, and these two police officers were freaked out. Jesus is closed, son. Why are you here? <laughs> I'm sorry. I just needed one more prayer, officer. (laughs) I got one more like on Facebook, and that's one more prayer. And you know, (laughs) God counts those. So, so that's it. They let me go, and uh, (laughs) as he left, he said, "So this is a gym." I could tell he didn't really. He wasn't hip Mm -hmm. to the Pokemon Go lingo. He's like, "So this is a gym," and I was like, "Yeah, it's a gym. Most of the churches are." And he said, "Oh, well, that explains why we've seen so many people tonight." To which I wanted to say. And I freaked you out by just showing up. You've seen, clearly you've seen a bunch of people. And it's just my tiny ass little red Celica. It's just like, holy shit, hold the presses. We got a, we got a fucking badass over here. This guy looks like he's good at Pokemon Go. They're, they were Tim Instinct and they were delaying you. The thought did cross my mind that maybe that was their gym. And this was like their intimidation tactic. You know what I would have said? I would have asked for his badge number. <laughs> I would. I seriously would have. If he would have pulled some like this is this is team uh, valor or um, team instinct bullshit, I'd have been like, I'm gonna need your badge number because <laughs> it is my God given right as an American to take this gym from you. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I didn't know you were a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We apologize to any Team Instinct <laughs> listeners, but not really. Team Mystic knows no mercy. You will not be spared in the upcoming I, apocalypse. I nearly said bitch, but I was like, no, I gotta go something a little more, a little more harsh. Ooh, you say to a, like a, a cop from the opposing team. How do you think? How how do you? Even think? though that is my preferred word, even in sweet ways for the vagina. Cunt, so, cunt yeah, is? yeah. I still I, we That's, talked about it before. Like I hate pussy. I just. 
Taryn, well, you're with me. <laughs> Dave, I hate it. Well, <laughs> Dave, I hate so much. well, my friend, I didn't know this. I didn't know this is how this conversation was going to start. <laughs> Uh, so you're going to play this episode back for your physician you can also play it back for your dad when you come out (laughs) yeah is that what you and Dave do you hate it together is that what you do (laughs) is that why you always have your dicks out for Harambe (laughs) that's what we call that's what we call um, anal sex in this house Harambe (laughs) shit you just got a Harambe (laughs) That was a foamy Harambe. Oh. <laughs> I don't know. That almost sounds like a cocktail. <laughs> My foamy, foamy Harambe. One foamy Harambe, please. <laughs> uh, that's it. That was my that was my non Harambe related story. Man, that's oh. Because I also had that run in with that cop who followed me after I was going very slowly driving the neighborhood to hatch eggs. But that cop lived there, right? Yeah, he did live there. So, and I was using that public road by his house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a public road. Pokemon Go. Here's the point. Pokemon Go has the police flummoxed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all this trespassing and yeah. All right, Dave. Yeah. Uh, oh, you want to talk about this game? Sure. We can. We can do that if you want. Um, do Do you hear that? Uh huh. What what is that? It's you know what I, I you know what it sounds like? It sounds like the click clack click clack of a minecart in Donkey Kong is what it sounds like. <laughs> but wait, I don't hear I don't hear any like joyful gorilla sounds on that. I just feel it sounds like it sounds like a lot of dead weight on that minecart, is what I'm saying. <laughs> <sighs> I'm trying I'm trying to picture in my head when you when you break open a barrel. The sound that happens. Do it. You got it. <laughs> That's the sound before you break it open, right? Because it's all <laughs> echoey, right? Boom, 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 Yeah. And I can just hear the, whenever he gets behind, whoever get that gets behind when you. When he gets harambe When he gets, <laughs> <laughs> you remember, you remember that Donkey Kong where King K. Roll uh, harambe is Donkey Kong? <laughs> he shoots in the head. <laughs> uh, look, also, um, I want to preface yeah, this. If there's got to be this, there has to be a Harambe Kong, where then you're there just... There has to be. There has to be. Um, the king of Harambe Kong. I um, I want to preface this by saying that I honestly do think that it's sad what happened to the yeah. gorilla. Yeah, you got to make jokes about it, though. But I do mm-hmm. absolutely have to make jokes about it. Like To my very like core, I have to make fun of this. Because... We're both Chandler Bing. Because we all, we're two Chandlers in a room is essentially what's happening. We've got no one in between us. So my point is I'm not going to try to be um, unoffensive. Like I'm just not going yeah. to even try yeah. to – like, yeah, it's just not going to happen. I'm glad we said that. We both said that 23 minutes in. Yeah, welcome. We're not going to worry about yeah, being offensive. Right, welcome to our show. <laughs> uh, all right, so there we go. Uh, of course I hear that sound of Donkey Kong being harambe uh, which of course ushers in a segment called uh, Dave Reads from Wikipedia. Mm-hmm. Okay, guys, this is from the Killing of Harambe Wikipedia entry. A self-described underground culture collective known as Otaku Gang made a parody fighting game known as Harambe versus Capcom with Harambe being able to fight characters from Capcom's Street Fighter franchise. (laughs) That is the sentence about this game on Wikipedia. (laughs) Well, it's accurate. It is accurate. It is accurate. This is a fighting game that stars Harambe. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it's impressively done for a free fan game. I do, too. I I honestly (laughs) do, too. Um, What did you like about the game? I was, I was, okay, it was funny starting off because there's the titles, the title screen and then arcade mode, and it's somebody coming in and telling Harambe there's a shadow agency. Do you want to do Tadbox Tadbox Theater? Theater? We haven't done this in a while. Um, Do you have access to the screen grab? Let me see. Uh, And more importantly, would you like to play the role of Good Samaritan or Harambe? I, if, look, if I can weigh in on this, I think you make a good Harambe. Okay. That's what you'd like to do. 
No, not title Screeb. Here, I'll send it to you. Okay. Or I'll just pass. I'll just pass the laptop to you. How's that? Okay. But promise you won't scroll up because the quiz is up there. Okay. I don't want you seeing. I don't want you seeing the answers to the quiz. I promise. Okay. All right. So here's Good Samaritan who says, "Yo, Harambe! A shadow agency is sending an extermination team to kill you. They know about your psychic powers. Go find Ryu. He'll test your might and lead you to the airport to escape to Africa." Whoever's trying to kill you will surely follow you there. So watch your back. That tells us a lot of things. That explains um, that explains Harambe's source of his power. He's psychic. Good looking out, fam. I'll use my psycho powers to convince the media <laughs> to report that I'm dead. That should buy me some time to fix this. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and give myself credit for casting you as Harambe because <laughs> I think you fucking nailed it. So this is also a reason that we can make jokes about Harambe because Harambe faked his own death. Mm-hmm. Um, I I can't tell you how giddy this fucking screen made me. Like when I first saw it, it was like immediate. Like I had like a part of my soul that hasn't been tickled since Barkley shut up and Jam Gaiden. Yep. Was was stroked <laughs> like that part of my soul. Was, I forgot that was there. It was awoken. <laughs> <laughs> Although clearly, Grodd was just a. They just stole the idea of Harambe. Absolutely. Like, oh, s- s- uh, sentient intelligent gorilla. Okay, Abs- with with psychic powers too. Yep. <laughs> so yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, so this is okay. Have Tyler? Have you played Street Fighter Three? I'm sure I have. It is um, probably the Street Fighter game that I know the least about because it came out at the time where I wasn't spending a whole lot of time on video games. Mm-hmm. Like, there's this, like, between all the Street Fighter 2s and Street Fighter 4, I kind of went on a, a Street Fighter cleanse. I'm sure you remember that. Yeah. I made oh, a big deal about yeah. it on all the social media <laughs> uh, that did not exist at the time. Um, on, I, I, you would just write on pieces of paper, oh. hashtag. Street Fighter Cleanse. Yeah, you remember my Street Fighter Cleanse live journal that I started? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you did your own, like, strong bad thing about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. no, I, right, that cartoon series street I did. Street Fighter Cleanse. On Newgrounds about not playing Street Go Fighter. Go down my Street Fighter Cleanse. <laughs> no more Street Fighter. <laughs> so, uh, how mm-hmm. So this game, it's, it's very short. Cause think what, you go through... Five battles, maybe, before you beat it? Um, there aren't many battles. Yeah, there's there's like f- maybe four or five regular battles, mm-hmm. and then you fight what I would consider to be the bosses of the game. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. Is is Harambe like, is just a reskin of a character in the game? No. He's just, no. All his moves and everything is completely unique? Um, yeah. Yeah, it's unique. See, that's even more impressive. As far as I know, yeah. it's unique. Now, oh, right. I mentioned Street Fighter Three earlier, and yeah. then I uh, got sidetracked. Um, this game is heavily based on Street Fighter 3. Like, the roster is pretty much Street Fighter 3 roster. Okay. Which kind of sucks for me because I'm not super familiar with all those characters and, like, a lot of them didn't make appearances again um, in mm. in recent, more recent Street yeah. Fighters. So, um, but but that is what this game is, is based on. Uh, and it was created in, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it. I don't know if it's Mugen or Mugen. Are, are, are you familiar with this engine? M-U-G-E-N? M-U-G-E-N. Yeah. I mean, if it's pronounced like the character from Samurai Shampoo, Which then it, it's Mugen. It surely is, yeah. I would assume. Um, so, Mugen is a, um, it's an engine. It's a 2D fighting game engine. Uh, I, oh, I'm, man. I might be completely wrong, but I think that's what Salty Bet uses. I was just about to ask Do that. Do you remember Salty okay, Bet? yeah. Uh, I think they're still around. I, I still see tweets and stuff. I, I don't know if they're as popular as they used to be, but um, so what a lot of people have done have cre- they've created characters um, that can be imported into uh, other Mugen created games. So there's a huge library, from my understanding. There's a huge library of like pop culture characters it's and so stuff awesome. that have been made. It is really awesome. What, what a world we live in, Dave. It's pretty fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, it's pretty awesome. Um, I love I love like seeing the weirdest fucking characters show up like on Salty Bet. Yeah. Like I mean, it's just like who would win in a fight, uh, Superman or the Pink Panther? Let's <laughs> fucking find out. 
Because when I watched it, yeah, it was a lot of Dragon Ball Z characters. Yeah. A lot. Like every, almost every match included one Dragon Ball Z character. Uh, sadly, no Dragon Ball Z characters in uh, Harambe versus Capcom. And if only Harambe had gone Super Saiyan, that would have been, been a pretty fucking good game, Dave. Can you imagine? Can you only imagine? Can you imagine if Harambe <laughs> was <maybe> fighting? <laughs> If he got really angry at the zookeeper and he turned to a Super Saiyan gorilla, I mean, they're already partially gorillas when they get really larger. So if Harambe was a smaller version of the Ozari, which is what they call the giant, the giant a giant ape form of the Saiyan. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm just saying Harambe's probably a Ozaru, yeah. but he's small. Yeah. I'll play my typical high school. <laughs> my role in high school is anime snob. Oh, I don't watch Dragon Ball Z. Oh, oh sorry. If it's on mainstream television, I don't watch it. <laughs> you are the anime one. Jacob is the music. Okay, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I was too busy watching the record of Lodos War. You probably haven't heard of it. <laughs> uh so we were both getting <laughs> lots of sex. We were having. We uh-huh. Were, uh-huh. I can tell that we had a lot of sex because I use the phrase "getting lots of sex." <laughs> I got all the snizzes. <laughs> I got snozzed up with all the sniz. Too much snoz. Too much snoz to sneeze at. So this game starts off because you get that screen and you're immediately thrown in to Harambe versus the Zookeeper. Yes. Did you recognize the Zookeeper? Yeah. <sighs> Is he is he from Final Fight? Yes. Okay. It is Eddie. Okay. Eddie is the zookeeper. Eddie made a, a cameo appearance in Street Fighter Three, and that is his model. Oh, okay. <laughs> in um, Harambe versus Capcom. Uh, see, I didn't even notice it until I was saying it. I was like, "Wait a minute, is that what that guy was from?" Okay. Yep, sure is. Because what the leather goes... daddy? That's an old. That's a Ted oh, Pog. Man, that is an old pool. one. <laughs> Because it goes, I don't know if it's the same every time, but what it went from Zookeeper to Ryu, was Ryu right after that? No, I never fought, uh, I never fought Ryu as Harambe. It always seemed like it was the same order for me. Zookeeper was always the first fight, Mm -hmm. and it's amazing because he says, I'm going to kill you, Harambe, or something along those lines. (laughs) Um, He looks like Eddie, and um, you can play as him. You can select the zookeeper in the roster. I don't know if you did that. No. But it is amazing because he has one fucking move, and that is to jab his handcuffs. <laughs> <laughs> that's all he does. He has a gun. The character has a gun, but he has one move, and that is to take the handcuffs, which are in his other hand, and jab them forward. <laughs> <laughs> so he's very easy to defeat as Harambe. I think it's important to point out that is when I realized that this game is 100% like you have to play as Harambe. You have to play as Harambe because it's like the game, I don't even know why there's a character select screen other than comedy, perhaps. (laughs) But like if you don't play as Harambe, um, there's no story. Uh, Because I was hoping like once I got through the game as Harambe, I was like, well, let me see what happens when I can play through the game as Ryu. Um, well, not much happened. Um, <laughs> I get to the, the fight with evil Ken and it picks right off. Like evil Ken's calling me Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> so this game is strictly a Harambe yeah, yeah. experience. <laughs> so I did, I got, what I noticed was zookeepers first and then it was like, um, I know I fought Zane Geef. Uh-huh. Um, I fought... You thought that one, the silver dude in the the loincloth. Yeah, this is where my lack. Or Uriel, of, Urian. U- yes, this is where my lack of Street Fighter Three knowledge mm-hmm. comes through. Urian. Yes, you do fight Urian. You fight Zangief. Uh, you fight Hugo. Yeah. Andore. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You fight. That might be it before you get to Evil. Evil Ken. Ken yeah. Uh, then the game's like, oh hey, let's 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 start, let's. Kick shit off right. Yeah, okay, right. This is where the game gets extremely difficult. Uh-huh. Like, I didn't have any problems on any of the fights up until Evil Ken, who says, oh, you've gotten strong, Harambe. Uh, and then you fight in the field, um, which is, I mean, the iconic the iconic Street Fighter field, yeah. where the fight happens and the grass blows. Because, <laughs> man, Ken is fucking tough. Ken just goes nuts with his fire-based combos. Like, 
the only like I it took me so many times, so many times, and I only won because of the pterodactyl. Wait, what? The pterodactyl finisher. Whenever you no. charge up your bar, you can activate <laughs> the giant pterodactyl that comes down. Wait, Harambe, no, what? Harambe jumps on its neck and it fires these huge <laughs> plasma bombs really? that do a ton of damage. No, I didn't know. I didn't yep. perform as special. Yep. Um, I didn't know how to do it. Like, so you just do it and the pterodactyl appears? Yeah, it, 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 it takes up like a good three quarters of the screen. It comes, it looks like a Joe and Max style, like pterodactyl. <laughs> yeah, he jumps on its back. And yeah, because you just, it's, it's, extre- it's hard to aim, but it's oh, extremely you aim powerful. It? Yeah, you move the pterodactyl side to side and <laughs> blow the, the huge plasma bombs out of its mouth. I had no idea. Mm-hmm. I have a confession to make. I didn't know how to perform specials in this game or ultimates, I should say. Uh, button mash like a motherfucker. <laughs> That's is that all, how you figured all, out how to do that? I just, just vaguely like if I butt mesh sort of like this, this happens. Yeah. Because I noticed that one and then there's one where he psychically like brings in a whole bunch of objects objects that smash. Yeah. Okay. I did that on accident when I was fighting Super M. Bison, yeah. who is right after Evil Ken. <sighs> and I couldn't figure out if like I, I did it by button mashing because I was just like I was about to die and just like in frustration I was just like fuck buttons <laughs> and then that happened where it's like it's like that scene in uh, Bespin where uh, Vader and Luke are fighting and Vader just starts th- using his mind using the force to throw big old blocks at Luke that's what it looks like um, and I thought M. Bison had done that to me I'll be honest I didn't realize <laughs> that I had done it to him because I, I didn't beat I didn't beat Bison uh, Super M. Bison is pretty super hard. Mm-hmm. He is super fucking hard. Um, so I played this game for, for today, the first time. I played it today um, in the morning. Like, it was the first thing I did when I woke up, which is also why I think that, like, intro screen of um, Good Samaritan and Harambe, <laughs> like, really, really hit me, like, in a good place. Like, it's kicked off the day with the right start. I was like, this is going to be a good day. <laughs> Um, but like I was, I was able to get the super M bison, but then like, he just kept fucking destroying me like over and over and over again. And I had to go to work. It's like, well, I guess I'm just not going to finish this game. Um, but then, uh, when I got home from work, I was like, let me give it another try. Cause I didn't know if there was anything after super M bison. Yeah. I didn't know if I had, if, if the game continued or if there was an ending to the game. Um, and I, um, uh, I got home and I I was able to get to Super M Bison fairly easily. I was surprised. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was I beat Evil Ken on like the third try. Um, I guess it's just because I had had my ass beaten by Evil Ken so many times yeah. this morning. Um, and then it probably took like twenty minutes of playing just Super M Bison to beat him. Uh, cause he's very difficult. You're a lot better at fighting games than I am. So that's like, that, it's fucking hard. If, if there is one like legitimate, like, I don't want to say good thing. Cause I think this game is just a good thing in its own right because it's super fucking entertaining. Mm-hmm. Like this is, this is a meme in video game form and it's free. Like everything about this is a meme. This game is it's just another incarnation of uh, Dicks Out Harambe. Mm-hmm. The actual hashtag that people are using for this game is Kicks Out for Harambe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like the one like useful bit that I got from this game is fighting Super M. Bison so many times that like I feel like I'm going to be innately able to block his combos. Because that's how I finally beat Super M. Bison was just like recognizing what combo he was going to use and like from a tell and then being like block high, block low, block low, block high, block low. And it's like, that's the only way I could beat him. It's like learning his combos and like recognizing when he's going to use them and then just blocking them. And then (laughs) I wasn't very good offensively. I kept using this cheesy tactic where I would do like a quick low punch uh, which in when would that would catch? I would do his uh, special move where he like does a clothesline. Yeah, which is essentially like I love it because I love that we just played Primal Rage because that is essentially Blizzard's uh, mega punch <laughs> move. Um, so I, I like that. That was I don't know if that's what they meant to do, but yeah. that's really what it looks like. So that's how I, I just rinse and repeat. 
So I, I would do that to M. Bison. I would hit him with that as many times as I could until he started his combo train again. And then I would just block, uh, block, 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 block as many as I could until I could counter. Jesus. It's hard. Yeah, there's it was no hard. way. The one, like, I fought him. I was making sub headway, tried to summon the pterodactyl. And, like, he would just hit me and interrupt. So I was like, oh, all yeah. right, no, no. That's the other thing I noticed with um, both Ken and M. Bison is that um, – I don't know if everyone heard that, but I really fought that burp down. Like I really did. Sh- I did everybody listening a solid because that thing was like coming the fuck up, and I was like, "No, I will finish this sentence." Um, something I noticed in this game is like, n- like none of Harambe's moves have priority. Like Mm-mm. if if they are going if if your opponent is about to use a special move and you like try to interrupt it with yours, it ain't gonna fucking happen. You're gonna get punished by that shit every single time. Um and oh, you wanna go over Harambe's move set? You knew the specials, which I never I mm-hmm. only saw one and I thought it was actually being used <laughs> against me. Um he's got some, I think, some pretty cool moves. His his scream. His psychic scream, <laughs> right? Which is like, um, a, like a funnel almost of sonic yeah, energy net. that, yeah, yeah, that comes out of his mouth. Short range, mm-hmm. uh, but it's a good like anti-air move. I would try to use that when people try to jump over me. Okay. Um, he has a a roll where he he spins and rolls on the ground, uh, which is a nice kind of crossover. Uh, and then he has Blizzard's Mega Punch, mm-hmm. where he. Uh, it's a long range punch that goes for about maybe like a third of the screen. Um, and then he's got, he's got one more man that I can't remember right now. I don't remember. Cause I was just juggling strong moves until the bar was filling up and I would just button mash till something happened. Yeah. It's not coming to me, which means that I didn't use it much. My bread and butter was truly that mega punch. Yeah. Like that had so much reach. It didn't do much damage, but it, honestly, it didn't really matter because I could just I could just chip away with it yeah. and s- stay relatively safe. Um, man, that's more technical talk than I intended to give on. That's this. good. You're showing, so, you're showing how good you are at fighting games. I'm not good at fighting you are, games. You're, you're a lot. You're the best person that I know at fighting games. Uh, I don't think that's even true. I think well, corn Paul, Paul Corn, if he's Paul's better, g- Paul's good. Mm-hmm. Um, just for the record, I did beat him at Marvel vs. Capcom. This oh, morning, so. oh, never mind. It is, is you. It is you. I mean, I barely <laughs> did it. We're both bad at it, so it doesn't really count. <laughs> it was the equivalent of a slap fight. <laughs> <laughs> um, like a middle school slap fight. Um, he kicks my ass in a lot of games, so I need to take I need to take fucking credit where I can. Um, but I think that Kyle uh, of Zombies at My Neighbors fame is uh, better at fighting games than oh, I. Oh, he was good at Mortal Kombat, uh, and uh, he's beaten me at Street Fighter Two several times too. Ooh, okay. So I think he's I think he's a, a strong strong fighter. I don't even have to be nice to him. Like, he does not listen to this. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> And every attempt to get him back on has been like, oh, 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 oh. Right, oh, right, 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 right. So, yeah, no. <laughs> I don't want to be on the show where you belittle the, the dead animal. That's <laughs> <It's> exactly <laughs> what he said when we asked him to be on this. <laughs> but yeah, I think, yeah, it's it fills that itch for Barclay Shepard Jam Gaiden. So it is well worth your hour of time to play this free, uh, funny game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was pretty technically sound. Yeah, yeah. No, it's... It's totally worth your zero dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, it's also pretty small. It's like 325 megabytes. Uh, you can get it for free at harambegame.com. So my recommendation to you, listener, is to go ahead and get it now, even if you do not plan on playing it, um, because I read the readme text that came along with this game, and down near the bottom, um, they say, Capcom, we love you. Please don't sue us. So what that tells They're me is a, a that takedown. they may get a takedown notice. Yeah. So like I downloaded this yesterday. This is coming out. Spoilers. <laughs> pull the curtain back. This is coming out tomorrow <laughs> on uh, Wednesday. So get it now while you have the chance because I don't know if they'll get a takedown notice. I hope yeah. they don't because if anything, this is me being completely honest. If anything, this actually makes me interested in playing Street Fighter 3. Yeah. Um, Because I I have tried that game in the past, 
and did not like it. But after playing Harambe versus Capcom, I am super interested in, in checking that game out again. Okay. Um, I feel like we have to talk about the music because all of the music in this game is original. Yeah, because like we got the the rap beat whenever you you kick up the title screen and choose Harambe, and I was yeah, you're right. Um, Otaku Gang, uh, they have a SoundCloud account, and I'll have a link to that in the show notes as well. Uh, you should check them out because if you haven't heard of them, I hadn't. Um, they've done a lot of cool shit this year. They released uh, uh, an album that mixes Star Wars and Biggie Smalls called uh, Life After Death Star. Um, <laughs> they released a um, oh, they released an album called Marshall vs. Capcom, which is all Eminem mixed with um, Street Fighter uh, tracks. Oh, I listened to some of that today. It's very good, and yeah. that, and some of those tracks. Uh, from that album are in uh, Harambe versus Capcom. Uh, and then they also did another album, which I haven't listened to yet, but I am excited to listen to called, I, I wish I would have known about this when we were doing the N64 list, although it may not have been out at that time, called OG64 Mixtape, which is uh, a okay. mix of um, a whole bunch of N64 games. Uh, so I'd recommend checking it out. I will have a link to that in the show notes. Um, and I, um, thought it was really interesting. Do you mind if I take a moment and just, uh, Please. share a little bit mm -hmm. of information about Otaku Gang? Yep. Cause I thought this was really cool. Uh, and I never would have known this had I, I not looked it up because it's not like blatantly on harambegame.com. Um, this is straight from their, their website, um, which says Otaku Gang is an underground culture collective created by artist-producer duo Richie Branson and Solar Slim, along with graphic artist Plush Giant. Um, so capable of making beats, rocking shows, and even developing video games. That's a little marketing talk. Um, OG knows how to make noise in a variety of different ways. More marketing talk. Uh, but this is what I thought was interesting. From producing billboard charting works with Def Jam recordings, and here's, here's the part I've been waiting to say, infusing hip-hop into Adult Swim's legendary Toonami programming block. That was that's oh, them. Oh, okay. That, that's them. That's crazy that to is, me. That's awesome. Okay. Um, to producing music for major video game releases like Marvel Heroes, which I've heard of, but I've never played Marvel Heroes. Yeah. Um, so I think it's interesting that they they're involved in that kind of that kind of. Yeah. Thing. No, that's awesome. Um, to, I I think it's really cool. I just wanted to share it. Yeah. No, I'm glad you did. I'll have a link to their site as well in the show notes uh, if anybody wants to check mm -hmm. it out. You can do a quiz. You want to talk achievements. We can talk about anything else. What you want to do? I think I'm kind of done talking about the game okay. other than to say check it out. Okay. There's not much to the game. There's not. It's, it's, I went, whenever I sat down, like, okay, I'll play this game. Whenever I sat down and actually started playing it, I was blown away at first. Like, oh, okay, this looks, this looks good. It looks like a Rambe fits in this world. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, he can no longer be in our world, Tyler. So I'm glad that's that he true. can exist seamlessly in another world. <laughs> Do you think that it, that's actually Harambe's soul that, yeah. in the game? That makes sense. He uploaded himself to the internet right before he died. Yeah. Well, you know that old movie, All Gorillas uh, Go to Video Games, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a real that was a real real stretch for a bad joke about all dogs go to heaven. Well, it's better than all dogs go to heaven too. Uh, I haven't oh, seen that. Yeah. Oh man. Wasn't the never mind. I'm not even gonna get into it. There's <laughs> there there's like a dog in the first movie who definitely should not have gone to heaven, right? It's been so long since I've seen that movie. Yeah. Also, um, if anyone tells you ever that there are no cats in America, they're fucking lying to you. That's a that's a fible. That's a fible cut. Oh <laughs> damn, damn. I don't think I've ever seen. All in one setting, all of Five Goes West. I think I've seen really? bits and pieces like at people's houses because I wanted to see it, but then I just never got to finish it. How about an American Tale? Nope. So uh, there mi is there might even be another Five movie. I don't know, but I've mm. seen I've seen both of them. An American Tale is um is a good movie, yeah. uh, but I have not seen it since I was seven. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do want to throw that caveat. I remember it out being there. the best movie ever in the world. God, I remember, man. <laughs> 
you know how I, you know, here's why I recommend you really enjoy an American tale is um, to draw Jaws eating the Ninja Turtles while you watch it. It really is. It really just <laughs> mwah, it brings out all the, uh, just the essence of the movie. Yeah. Okay. So achievements that mm-hmm. was mentioned. Do you want to talk about achievements? Okay. Let's do that. Okay. Let's do that before I hit you. Bam with this quiz. Okay. Uh, let's see. Primate finger cuffs. Okay. And you unlock that by losing to the zookeeper. That's hard to do. Uh huh. <laughs> That's hard to do. Okay. Do you have any other achievements? Uh, I can think of one if you want to go. All right. I got, I have a couple. Um, they're all really good. You're going <laughs> to like them. Uh, my first achievement is called Gorilla Tactics, Tyler. It's mm-hmm. called Gorilla Tactics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in order to unlock Gorilla Tactics, uh, you need to beat the game as Harambe. <laughs> okay. When you do beat the game as Harambe, do you mind if I spoil this for you? Please. It is revealed to you that Harambe was actually created by Shadowloo. Uh, that's that's where he gets his psychic sense. powers. Um, and M. Bison wanted to destroy him himself because he felt like, ooh, and then I forgot what it actually was. So, and Bison mm-hmm. wanted to destroy himself, uh, Harambe himself for reasons. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe mm-hmm. he felt bad about creating him. For day six mocking. I don't know. For- <laughs> uh, okay. Tyler, I have a second achievement. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one is called Gorilla Radio. <laughs> Tyler, it's called Gorilla <laughs> Radio. Lights out. Uh, and in order to unlock Gorilla Radio, you need to podcast about Harambe versus Capcom. Oh, shit. Achievement unlocked. So I'd like to take a moment. We just kind of <laughs> bask in the glory of unlocking that achievement. Uh, I do have one more achievement, uh, and it is called uh, So Go Ahead, Go Nuts, Go Ape Shit. In order to unlock So Go Ahead, Go Nuts, Go Ape Shit, uh, you need to perfect Super M. Bison. Oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. Yeah, you need well, the perfect super invite. Somebody might be able to do that somewhere. I hope so. That's the challenge that I issue to <laughs> you listening, listener. Oh, man. Um, I, I feel bad I didn't mention earlier, we should have mentioned that this game is for PC Windows. There isn't a Mac version. Uh, you, do need, you do need Windows uh, in order to run it. Okay. So just throwing that out there. Okay. Do you have any more achievements? I don't. In that case... Because I try to think of someone with gorillas, mm-hmm. but then I couldn't think of any, the title of any of their songs, so I just stopped. Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you could just play this two player with Clint Eastwood. That's true. <laughs> if you I mean, if you could talk Clint Eastwood into playing this, if you could pull him away from the uh, Republic National Convention <laughs> for a moment, yelling at an empty chair. Uh huh. Th- that's how you unlock Clint Eastwood. <laughs> You play two player mode with you in an empty chair. You just set the and second you, controller in the empty and chair. And you chastise the empty <laughs> chair for being a bad player. <laughs> That's great. All right. <laughs> Tyler, mm-hmm. I, I have a couple questions for you before I launch into a barrage okay. of questions. Okay. Uh, the first of these questions uh, is if you were to give this game a beard that sums up how you feel about it, what kind of beard would it be? For anyone new listening, this is just a fun way that we like to rate games. Mm. Uh, we have had a shitload of listens to Primal Rage, which makes me think that for some reason we may have new listeners. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the show yeah. where we talk about a beloved dead animal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, the beard that is formed from all the tears of all the PETA members who were very ah. upset about the death of Harambe. Yes. Not just PETA members, though. Everybody, the Most world. Of, they cried the hardest. The world, they probably <laughs> did, yeah. Or they got or maybe tears of rage. Oh, both. So we're definitely going to play the Pokemon PETA game next, right? Oh, God, I have. Ooh, oh, I man. know you have. Oh. I know you have. That is I, an awful, awful game. What also, was it called? Do you remember? No, I don't. I remember watching the Open the Treasure Chest and found the videos of like animals being slaughtered yeah, and yeah. shit. Oh, it's horrible. I'll have a link to that in the show notes if you would like to play this horrible game, unless they had a takedown notice. Yeah. If we can still get a hold of it, I think it would be fun to do Pokemon Uranium 2. What is that? The Pokemon fan game that Nintendo um, stopped after it was in production for like nine years. They released it. Bam, Nintendo issued a takedown notice. Okay, so why did they feel like they needed to make it? Do you know? Like, what what kind of, was it a different spin? 
I, on I, Pokemon? I don't know much more about it besides that, like, it just is a, a long, detailed, fan-made Pokemon game hmm. that is now taken taken down. I'm sure we could find it somewhere, but... Oh, yeah. Yeah, things don't die on the internet. Mr. Bay usually uh-huh. keeps a... He's like the Ben and Jerry's graveyard. Uh-huh. Sure. That's where he keeps all the flavors. <laughs> uh, d- side note, are you at all interested in Pokemon Sun and Moon? I might be. What are you talking about? <laughs> the new games that are coming out? I think oh. in November... Uh, I never really. I've. I've. Okay. If, if you played, I would play the other one. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting it yeah. just because of Pokemon Go. Like Pokemon Go has really turned me on to uh, Pokemon in general. All right, Tyler. Yes, Dave. I loved that beard. Thank you. I got a good Thank visual you. of that beard. Mm-hmm. Um, Tyler, if you were to give this game a pair of glasses mm-hmm. that sums up how you feel about it, mm-hmm. what kind of glasses would it be? I would give it two. Shaky sniper sights <laughs> from, from the zoo sniper. Right. Do you think? Do you think that that person still works at the zoo? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I hope so. I mean, you yeah. never know. Do you think? Like, do you think as he was taking that shot, he was like, ah, I don't know if I am going to be like a celebrity or a complete or a villain. villain. Yeah. I don't even know who did it. I don't think they released that information, yeah, which is probably a super, super great deal. Do you think it was the dentist who shot uh, Cecil the Lion? Lion? Yeah, absolutely. They called him it, in. They were like, come on was. in. It was like, yeah, this situation was <laughs> unraveling, and the director of the Cincinnati Zoo was like, oh, shit, I know who I need to call. <laughs> 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 it was a real like Commissioner Gordon Batman scenario <laughs> where uh, the dentist's red phone rang in his office and he picked it up and had to leave in the middle of a root canal. It's okay. I have to go kill a rare and endangered animal. I want to say it's what you do. It's very good at it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Tyler, I love those glasses as Thank well. You. Are you ready for this quiz? Yeah, I am. Are you ready for this quiz? I honestly think that you are going to do very, very well. Uh, this is a quiz that I put together called Gorilla Quiz. <laughs> <laughs> There's 10 questions. Okay. Tyler, I'm okay. going to read you a sentence, and I need you to tell me what gorilla I'm talking about. Okay. Mm. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Number one. The story about an occupational therapist who decides to devote her life to the study of primates. This is not a gorilla, but it is gorilla related. I like to start the quiz very tricky. <laughs> I'd love to start this. Uh, I like to, like to start the exception of the rule. Right. That's yeah. That's Jane, how you said it. Jane Goodall. Um. Hmm. Well, this is the name of a movie I'm looking for. Oh, it's a movie. This is the name of a movie I'm looking for. An occupational therapist who starts studying gorillas. Who decides to devote her life to the study of primates. No, uh, Congo. Gorillas in the Mist. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Um, Which I always thought was based on the life of Jane Goodall. It's not. Oh. Um, and I'll, while I was doing research for Gorilla, for gorilla Quiz, <laughs> I um, stumbled upon an interesting fact about Jane Goodall that I think is appropriate for Tadpog. Mm-hmm. Because we in the past have talked about the comics, the comic strips that we like. Mm-hmm. Um, and Marmaduke is not on that list. Mm-mm. But The Far Side is oh, on yes. that list, even though The Far Side has a very specific place in time, and that's the 90s. Um, so Gary Larson made a comic. I know exactly. You know what about you're this controversy? About. Yep. Uh, yep. Would you like to tell the story? Like, because the comic is two gorillas grooming each other, and one pulls out like a blonde hair. Yeah. If you've been hanging out with that Jane Goodall hussy, right? And like, yeah, there was a huge thing about like him calling Jane Goodall that. Did, like, did you hear how it how it shook out? Didn't she like? He got to go on set or travel to meet her or something like that. It all worked out positively, didn't it? He got a letter that was drafted by the lawyers of the Jane Goodall Foundation. I think that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. um, Telling him that they were not pleased at all. Um, And he, uh, I don't know if he felt bad or not. I'm just going to assume he felt bad. We can all assume that. Uh, Two years later, when Jane Goodall returned... Uh, she told him that she thought that it was amusing. <laughs> <laughs> so the foundation on, without any like communication with her, yeah. was like, this is bullshit. Meanwhile, she thought it was funny. 
<laughs> As she should. I can see where you'd think that, yeah, that it's funny. Uh, I, and also, I don't know if this was part of like the way he made it right on the legal end. I don't know. I don't even feel like, to me personally, that doesn't feel like that's anything illegal. Mm. Um, but I know that all like shirts and merchandise that featured that strip um, the Jane Goodall strip, uh, the proceeds to that went directly to her foundation. Okay. Um, this may or may not be connected, but the next line on Wikipedia said um, that he was attacked by a monkey in 1998. <laughs> <laughs> So, That's funny. I remember reading that story in. I hope he's okay. In my, I just laughed really hard at like Gary. <laughs> Gary, Gary Larson, Larson getting, brutalized. getting brutalized by a monkey. Because in that, uh, remember that cartoonist who <laughs> used to have testicles. <laughs> <laughs> and he made a joke, and then God was like, "Ooh, you yeah. can get yours." Oh God! <laughs> the, this the comic strip God was like, "No, <laughs> you crossed the line." Because he in that far uh, far side fiftieth or whatever anthology book that has like the the cow skeleton cover. of the T-Rex on the oh, front yeah. has that in it explaining the story around Really? It. Yeah. I love that. Is it a letter from Jane Goodall? I think I don't think he printed the maybe he printed the letter cuz he has that and tells the whole story behind it. Well, I hope that it's the letter. Mm. Um I've really been thinking about buying those books, I'm not going to lie. So god, it's still so good. I don't own a single far side book anymore. I had a couple when I was in middle school, mm-hmm. but I don't know what happened to them. Well, I I peed on mine and then sold yeah, them. Right. Well, that's how you claim them as your own, <laughs> yeah. right? All right. So so far, so far, you're not doing so good. Mm-mm. That's okay though, because nope. you have nine more questions. Okay, and I'm confident <laughs> in your abilities. Question number two: Over forty feet high, this Hanna Barbera character, whose catchphrase is his own name, Grape Ape. Grape Ape. Grape Ape. Nailed it. Grape Ape. Little trivia for all the Tadpog Wiki editors. My father's favorite Hanna Barbera character, Grape Ape. There okay, you go. That, that put that in the book. <laughs> My father is Grape the Ape. Grape Ape. <laughs> <laughs> when he sneezes, we have to move because the house is destroyed. <laughs> Um, also, my mother really does not like having sex with him, which is why <laughs> there's just me and my sister. <laughs> Something about a 40-foot purple gorilla's penis just does not sit well. My mo- uh, no, thank you. No, thank you. <laughs> going to pass. Number three, Tyler. You're doing good. You're doing good. Debuted in 2001 and earned an entry in the Guinness Book of World Records for the most successful virtual band. Gorillas. Gorillas with a Z. Z. Very good, very good. Tyler, question number four. This colossal ape has been featured at many rides at Universal Studios. King Kong. King Kong. Okay. The first one burned down. I didn't know that. Uh, It it burned down like a backlot fire, I read. Um, And then they built another one. And then I guess the new movie came out, and they built a ride for that. Pfft. So, I don't the know. The new movie? I haven't seen the new movie. I have. Is it really bad? Jack Black's in that, right? It's not bad, but it's not good either. Is that a, it, it is a Tenacious D movie, right? Yeah. Then yeah. I, I should see it. Kyle, Kyle Gass is King Kong. I feel like he <laughs> makes an appearance, but I haven't seen the movie. I feel like he has to have made an I don't appearance. Re- I don't even remember. Um, okay, Tyler. Number five. <laughs> Hanna-Barbera's well-known gorilla for sale. Hanna-Barbera really liked gorillas, by the way. This was their gorilla for sale. Magilla gorilla? Magilla gorilla. Nailed it. Tyler, number six. The good gorilla who is fluent in sign language. From Congo. It is from Congo. I've never seen it. Uh, I've only heard you reference pretty gorilla Amy... Amy, Amy, okay, nailed it. <laughs> That's all you had to do was channel me, yeah. channeling Amy. Amy, good gorilla. <laughs> all right, Tyler. This psionic genius is a reoccurring enemy of one of the fastest men alive. Oh, that's Gorilla Grodd. That is Gorilla Grodd. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I swear, by the way. I would not have known that if not. I had seen a few episodes of the WB Flash show. I love that Gorilla Grodd is like in that show, and they like, made it work. Uh huh. <laughs> it, it, it's 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 wonderful. I really, it's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm also I'm Gorilla Grodd. 
this might just be me, but when Harambe in um, a little game you might have heard heard of called Harambe versus Capcom, when he uses his sonic roar, I swear to God, he says "grog." He does. No, you're <laughs> right. He does. He absolutely does. I forgot to n- mention that. Oh, 100% he does. So it's not just me. No, uh, okay. absolutely he does. All right, Tyler. You're doing very well. Mm. You're doing very, very well. Number eight. Featured in a recent team-based shooter, this engineer slash scientist was born and raised on a lunar colony. Say it again. Featured in a recent team-based shooter, this engineer and scientist was born and raised on a lunar colony. Team-based shooter. What is a recent team-based shooter? I don't like team-based shooters. Um... I don't. I have no clue. I don't even know what to guess. I can give you a hint. Okay. I can give you a hint that I think will either uh, actually help you or not help you at all. Okay. Um, I'll take it. I will start with the hint that will not help you at all. Okay. The game is Overwatch. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, that helps me because f- I'm not going to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The second hint, I, f- I felt like this was a hard one to ask you, so I built in hints. Okay. Second hint, this character from Overwatch... Shares a name with a former prime minister of the UK. Tony Blair. It, it is not Tony <laughs> Blair. <laughs> it is Winston. Oh. We were looking for Winston. Well, nope. I, I know none of their names. I don't really even know what Overwatch looks like. Well, that, my, my interest in it is so small, uh-huh. I don't even care what it looks like. I'm going to file that away in the back of my mind <laughs> for the next time you ask me to play some game I don't want to play for the show. Okay. And I'll be like, all right, if you play Overwatch. Because <laughs> I haven't played it mm-hmm. either. Uh, well, I take it I played in the beta, and I was fucking horrible mm-hmm. at it. I know I will be. That's why I have no interest in it. And that <laughs> straight up turned me off to the game. Because it's like, it sucked. Because it's like, I love how this looks. I love the concept of the game. However... I am just as bad at this game as I was at Team Fortress 2, which was very, very bad. <laughs> Your hand motions were it made that. I wish everybody could have seen I that. I should have done the, <laughs> the geese. The cold geese. The cold geese. Uh, any, any Patreon donors will get that yep. reference on Friday. <laughs> Tyler, question number nine. This gorilla is more fun than a barrel of monkeys. Donkey Kong? Donkey Kong. Okay. Thank you. I was worried that that was I. So I knew you know Donkey Kong, so I tried to word it a little trickly. Mm-hmm. Number ten. To be honest with you, I do. I had no idea how easy or hard this was. Okay, but I have a third party who weighed in on this for me. Okay. Number ten in J.K. Rowling's Harry Potter series. Mm-hmm. You're familiar with mm-hmm. this, right? Mm-hmm. Um, these two characters are often compared to gorillas. Uh, I wager they're, um, Malfoy's friends, um, Crab and Goyle. Crab and okay. Goyle. <laughs> Good job. One of them, the actors in the movie, I forget which one it was. I think it was Crab. The actor turned out to be a drug dealer. So when it came down for the last movie, they just replaced him. With really? Some new character. With a gorilla. With a- <laughs> <laughs> they got Amy from Congo, and he played Crab. <laughs> Goyle, Amy, come on. <laughs> Amy, hurrying. <laughs> Avada Kedavra. Avada Kedavra. <laughs> what is weird about the sign language of spells is it's actually uh, the motions that you need to cast a spell. Amy does not need a wand. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't need a wand. She doesn't need a focus. <laughs> Mm. That's 80, it. 80%. I That's missed it. You two. Did very, okay. You did very well. I'll give you half credit for Tony Blair. Okay. Because <laughs> I could name another British Prime Minister. <laughs> all right, man. That's all I got. I That's hope good. this I hope this was a fun one. Yeah, no, I enjoyed that. Um, would you like to take a call or anything? Or yeah, we could probably take one. Take one. One, it's maybe two. A little late. Yeah. Okay. Um do you have a do you have a quirky anecdote that you'd like to tell while I pull this up, or would you prefer to do it in complete silence so that we can edit it out? We'll do it in complete silence. Complete silence it is. We have a lot. We have a lot. We have a lot. I'm my, scrolling. My daydream, my weird driving home daydream today. We're doing complete silence. <laughs> <laughs> I could save it. <laughs> no, don't save it. I want to know what your daydream was. Um, because I read I saw a thing on Reddit. 
that Bill Murray doesn't have an agent. He has an 1-800 number that you call and leave a voicemail pitching your movie. Oh my and if God. he likes it, he'll call you back. We have to call him. So my daydream was us calling and telling about the podcast that he comes on the show and demands that we do all of the calls with him. All the rest of the calls. Oh my God, let's call Bill Murray. <laughs> Can Let's call him right now. Do you have the number? No. <laughs> that would be awesome. We got to get it. Anyone listening out there, if you know Bill Murray's... 1-800 number, <laughs> let us know, and I we will call it on the show. Yeah. We'll come up with a movie, and we'll call them. How about that? The Tadlock yeah. movie. Yeah. I like it. It can be Amy, the the, the Harry Potter series. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It uh, mashes up Planet of the Apes with Harry Potter. It's brilliant. Mm, I like it. Mm. Potter of the Apes. <laughs> All right, here is Harry a- Potter H A I R Y. Wands out for Harambe. <laughs> All right, Tyler, here is a text message from 614 uh, who says, fucking Tadpog, colon, spelled out in parentheses, I am sitting here at work in our horrid bathroom feeling guilty. I have this week's podcast queued up in three podcasts, and I feel like you guys are sitting at a table bored waiting for me to listen before you can cast. (laughs) I am sorry to Tadpog Nation for making them wait, but I need to be fully awake and prepare my body for any episode of this phenomenal hour and a half to two hours of my life. Appreciate you. Thank you. Yes. We do have that giant red phone when it starts flashing. Okay, someone's listening. Go. Go. We do, we actually we do record live for every listener. <laughs> <laughs> Primal Rage was hard because we had over a thousand the other day, so yeah. we had to do this the show a thousand oh, times. A thousand times. It was really hard. So that's where your Patreon dollars are going. <laughs> uh, we can't eat anymore. We don't have time to eat. No. So we're just hooked up to IVs. I- <laughs> <laughs> we're like you know that scene in the Matrix. If that's what it took to do Tadpog for a living, so be it. Yeah, I'd do it. I mean, that'd be very, very expensive, mm-hmm. but I would do it. Yeah. I'm picturing the scene from The Matrix where they show the real world and they're showing all the humans and their their battery cells. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> That's us. Tyler, I've got another another message here. This is a voicemail. Um, I feel like we have time for this. This looks like this is a call from our very own pussy loving Taryn. <laughs> <laughs> Motherfucking Tadpog. Hola, this is Taryn. Uh, a little under the weather, so apologies again. Texas kind of has these weird allergy seasons, and I am just bogged down. But I'm sitting in my office over in downtown Houston and catching up on the Eps. I'm on the one about showering with your dad. Not yep. something I'm really into. Uh, definitely have showered with some guys, but never <laughs> with my dad. Um, Prude, call us weird back. Video game and weird <laughs> that someone wanted to base a video game on that. But hey, we all have our quirks. I recommend. The reason it. I called is because you have like dove in to my way back machine in my brain. Um, I was obsessed with Eureka's Castle when I was little. Mm-hmm. So I'd like to usher in a little segment I like Uh-oh. to call Taryn sings the theme song <laughs> of your favorite television shows when she was little. Pausing this mm-hmm. because I want everybody listening to remember Taryn singing the David the Gnome theme, theme song, <laughs> which her version of it goes, David the Gnome. <laughs> so I'll have a link to that episode. Eureka's Castle. That's kind of what I'm expecting. <laughs> Let's see. Much like I did with David the Gnome. <laughs> That's a great throwback. Um, so it starts out with the big the big uh, guy going up to his music box and he goes, Oh, look, my favorite castle music. Oh my God. And then they start singing. And I think it goes something like Uh them, us, they, the, you, we, you, we, one, two, three, Eureka. Eureka's castle. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So you're welcome. Yeah. Uh, That That was my very clouded and congested version of the song. I hope you all are, uh, uh, cut off. Taryn and I sang on about the same level. She's probably a little better than me, but it's pretty close. Give me your Eureka's Castle. Eureka's Castle. Yeah, about the same. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait, oh. Same. That's Tarzan Boys. I used that earlier. <laughs> I know the Vinga Boys. What is it? They like to party, so that's all. They like to party. 
I think it's Tarzan Boys that I'm thinking of. Do you remember that? Uh, I think it was a Listerine commercial. I believe it was for mouthwash uh, where um, the bottle of mouthwash is swinging through the jungle on a vine. And I'm pretty sure it's Tarzan Boys playing in the background. Mm. Are you familiar with the song? I can I can sing it again for you. Is it the oh 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 I remember that as a lyric in the song. I just remember that. And then that I think it's part. like, da 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 but I don't know what it is. Well, Probably about Harambe. Yeah, I think so. My guess. Do you think they played that at Harambe? They were funeral? precogs, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Tarzan boys made entirely of precogs. Do you think the Tarzan boys showed up to Harambe's? I got I hope so. Were they uh, Harambe's pallbearers? <laughs> <laughs> and Jane Goodall, so it's fine. She's still alive, I assume. I think that she is still alive. Okay. But that is, yes, an assumption on my part as well. <laughs> uh, well thank you, Taryn. Yes, thank you, Taryn. That was good. That's about it. We're yeah, about I think we're good. Yeah. I think we're good. We're ready to harambe the fuck <laughs> out of here. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Stitcher. So don't miss the next episode. We're talking about Fantasy Star 2? Maybe. Maybe. We haven't talked about it. I'm fine to do that, but here's the deal. To wait until Wednesday? We're back. We're, if we do it... We're on a weird schedule yeah, now because yeah. we're doing our original flavor Wednesday shit on Mondays now. Yeah. But I don't know what to fill it with unless you want to do Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Okay. Just throwing that out there no, as, a, got, as a possible option. I'm in, I'm in. All right. I'm in. Okay. Super Nintendo game? Yeah, Super Nintendo game. Yep. There is a Genesis version as well. Oh, okay. However... I am not going to feel inclined to play that version mm. because A, you are on a quest to play every Super Nintendo game. Yep. And B, the Super Nintendo has more buttons. <laughs> yeah. So I would rather play that I game with that. more yeah. buttons. That sounds good to me. Right. I'm in. Cool. I'm in. So the next episode will be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters. Uh, hey, you like us? You want to support us? We love five star written reviews. You can go do. do that on iTunes. Yes. You can give our shirt that on Amazon. You can yes. give us that on Stitcher. Yes. Um, I think that's it. Those are the three places you can give five star written reviews. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, you can't really give a review on SoundCloud, but you can yeah. like us on SoundCloud. Yeah, like us on you SoundCloud. Can do that. So if if you want to get in contact with us, uh, episodes you really want to request, you have a Patreon request. Mm-hmm. Whatever, any commentary about the show, anything. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, just get in touch with us. And whatever whatever you ask of us, we promise we will get to that eventually. eventually. Uh, don't worry, guys, we're going to be back. In the meantime, uh, find us. We're on tadpog.com. That's where the show notes live. I will have a link in there to the episode where Taryn sings the theme song <laughs> to David the Gnome. I think that's the Jaws episode. If it's not, it's um, the... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Manhattan Project. Yeah, Manhattan Project. It's one of those two. I will find it uh, and post it uh, in the show notes. Um, also, there, I'm definitely going to find Amy Good Gorilla. That's going in the show notes. <laughs> please, don't, please don't Google that. Just go to Tadpog and look up there. <laughs> Uh, you can also find us on Facebook. We're at facebook.com slash Tadpog. There's a lot of cool people there doing a lot of cool shit. Thank you for posting on there and commenting. Uh, I really like reading those things. Mm-hmm. Um, he, honestly, I would love to hear if any of you out there have played Harambe versus Capcom or plan on it um, in the near future. I'd like to hear what you think about the game in the comments. Uh, mm-hmm. Because is this just me? Is this just us? Uh, or is, do, does everybody find this game as hilarious? Yeah. Uh, you can find us on Twitter. Uh, we're at Tadpog underscore podcast. It's cumbersome, I realize. Uh, big thank you to everybody who uh, retweets us, um, especially our episode announcements, uh, because that helps get the word out. Uh, if you'd like to call us, uh, you can do so at 270-883-2555. Uh, we're going to try to start working our way through the backlog of calls um, as quick as we can. Mm-hmm. So we'll get to you eventually, uh, much like other things. Uh, Tyler, you mentioned SoundCloud earlier, which um, I'm glad that you did. I have had I, several people recently this week tell me that they are looking for ways to listen to old Tadpog episodes. Yeah. And here's what I've got. I do not have any great options. If, you're, if you want to listen to old Tadpog episodes, this is what I've got. You can listen to everything on tadpog.com. Um, they, um, the players 
aren't embedded on the main page. So like what you have to do is you have to click on the title of the episode and then the player should show up. That's a pain in the ass. I know. Uh, I need to work on our site, but I've got a lot of shit going mm, yeah, on. Yeah, well, I know. Um, yeah. I got a lot of shit going on. So I'm going to do that when I can. Yeah. Uh, I would actually, I'm interested in actually hiring somebody. To do I, I'm all for that because I feel, I feel bad that you have to do that. So I need to get one, my laptop fixed or do something so I can start recording and editing the episodes so you're not burdened down with that. And then, yeah, hire somebody to fix that because you're too busy to do it. I don't know how to do it. So. Uh, I, I, you know, I always tell myself this would be a good learning experience for web development, which it would. I could do it. I, I, oh, I know, I know that it. I could yeah. do it. It's just I would not be able to do it quickly. And I don't honestly don't know that I would be able to do it the best way. Yeah. Um, so I'm just throwing that out there. The episodes are there. They're kind of a pain in the ass to get to. Here's what I think is a better option. Uh, we have every episode that we've done up until episode 236, I think, on SoundCloud. Um, if you search for us on SoundCloud... I have playlists for every year that Tadpog has existed. Mm -hmm. Um, There is a downside to this, and that downside is that you cannot download these episodes to your mobile device. You have to do it on your desktop and then transfer the MP3s to your mobile device. That is shitty. I I really understand Mm -hmm. that. And uh, SoundCloud knows it's shitty. SoundCloud actually charges listeners for the privilege of doing that. Uh, which sucks because we already pay SoundCloud money. Uh, we already pay SoundCloud, I think, like 130 bucks a year in order to upload the amount of content that, that we have. I think that's a really shitty model because, w- Tyler, we and other creators are generating the content that SoundCloud is... Tr- charging the listener, listener for yeah and they're charging us too yeah. so they're charging both ways i feel like they're double dipping no it's super shitty and i feel like that's bullshit yeah absolutely i don't know it's pro- somebody else bought up soundcloud right yeah uh, so i mean we'll imagine them out imagine that's that's the change that came with possibly with that. i understand that they need to be profitable i want soundcloud to exist soundcloud serves a purpose and i and i like that they're there. I like archiving our stuff there. There's a lot of cool features on SoundCloud where like people can comment on a track at a certain timestamp. I think that's really cool because someone could comment on something that we said, for example. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just not a good. I hate. I hate thinking that our listeners have to pay like ten dollars a month in order to listen to Tadpog episodes offline. Yeah, that's oh, that's super shitty. So that is an option. I'm looking at other options. Possibly, maybe, here's an unsexy option, is we, we start paying for a premium Dropbox account. And we can share that. We can put all of our episodes in that Dropbox folder and then share the link with people. That is super unsexy because that creates a lot of work for uh, us. Mm. <laughs> uh, if I can figure out a way that we don't have to manually share the link with everybody who wants it, uh, which is potentially thousands of people, um, <laughs> then I, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I have to figure it out. My point is I'm, I'm working on a solution for you guys. Cause I hear you. Mm-hmm. I, I hear that I, and I want you to be able to listen to our old stuff. I can't have more than like 25 or 30 episodes in our feed at a given time or iTunes just fucking does not work. Uh, You cannot listen to Tadpog. Like when I've gone over 30, our feed stops updating on iTunes. So my hands are tied there. My hands are tied with SoundCloud. It's like everywhere my hands are tied. Yeah. Oh, it sucks so much. I did something today um, that might help. Uh, I created an RSS feed for Tadpog on SoundCloud. Here's the problem with that, though. It is limited to 250 episodes, so it only goes as far back as like Earthworm Jim, which is like episode 88 or 87. Mm. We've got a lot of content. Man, we Um, do, don't we? It's just a matter of trying to figure out the best way to get you guys our old content. This is an open letter to you listening. If you have a suggestion... I'm open to it. Let me know. It's worth looking into. Um, it, just please know that I, I'm not 
that I am working on figuring out a solution for that. It's a it's like a good problem to have, um, mm. but I but it's still a problem. And I hear you. I want you to be able to listen to old episodes too. That was a sorry. That was a really long uh, no ne- necessary. Um, hey, did you enjoy that dry five minutes of just <laughs> audio <laughs> fucking that I just did? Um, hey, if you did enjoy that, you can reward us. Uh, with money, if you'd like to do that, uh, we would appreciate it. Uh, we have some very, very generous listeners who already do so. Uh, by donating at least a dollar a month, you do get access to the monthly bonus episodes that we do. Um, September's episode, September's bonus episode is coming out this Friday, uh, and I am working on setting up an RSS feed for that for our bonus episode. Yeah, I'm so glad that that happened. I love mm-hmm. I I love that Patreon is set is making that a tool that's available to podcasters. So, my point is you might get some weird emails in the future Patreon donors saying that episodes have been re-uploaded because I am going to have to re-upload almost every bonus episode that we've done uh in order to get them on the feed. So, bear with me, uh gorilla with me, but <laughs> Uh, that will be happening. Uh, I appreciate your patience. I would like to thank a few people who have donated to us recently. I'd like to thank Douglas from Better Made for upping his donation. I would like to thank Micah uh, Perdue, uh, Exalted Lord Micah Perdue, for upping his donation. I would like to thank Sandwich Pope Phil Hawkins. Hawkins? Why the fuck did I do that? (laughs) I've been talking for too fucking long. Sandwich Pope Phil Hawkins. Sorry, old buddy Hawkins, uh, for upping his pledge. Uh, and I'd like to thank a new donor, Janie Lynn Egger, for, uh, for pledging. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, we hope you enjoy the uh, bonus episodes, which are coming soon. Uh, and that's all I got. If you would like to become, if you'd like to be like our good old buddy and friend, Phil Hawkins, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash tadpog and uh, donate there. Uh, if you want to send us anything, mm-hmm. so a package, a game, I recently requested postcards to make a a, a fan mural. So uh, right. please, if you want to send us anything like that. I love that idea, by the way. Thank you. Send it to Tadbox Studios, care of Nicole Nance, P.O. Box 3785, Paducah, Kentucky 42002. We also have an Instagram, Tadbox underscore podcast. Shit goes on there. So... We there have a go. we have a Twitch channel. Uh-huh. Uh, I stream when I can. Um, I'd like to do it more frequently, but you know, life yeah. just gets in the way. Yep. Uh, just do a search for Tadpog. You'll find us there. I want to add something to your postcard request because I love that idea. I think that's a wonderful idea. I hope that listeners actually do send us postcards. Mm-hmm. I have a request. If that we, does be Mike. I want a postcard from Madisonville. I want a postcard <laughs> from the Cincinnati Zoo. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. I want to. I want with Harambe with on Har- it, or like get, uh, get greetings from Harambe's gravesite. <laughs> I need. I need a Cincinnati Zoo postcard. If we have any listeners in Cincinnati, I don't see what they what they did with him. I do not know. Hmm. I think there's a statue there. They, they just threw his corpse in the lion den. They, they just. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that lion just spit a bullet out. <laughs> <laughs> they literally bronzed him. Yeah, they just pretty good. Just, just dipped him in bronze. Yeah. <laughs> they had that, you know, the zoo. Most zoos keep a pit yeah. of molten bronze. Yeah, absolutely. That's where you take your booties and your dead gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> do you have bronze booties? I don't. I do. Does anyone? You really I do? do? My mom has a pair there. Really? At home? Yeah. No yep. shit. I thought that was just a thing that no, happened no. on television. Oh no, she fucking did that. <laughs> really? Yeah. Interesting. I think my mom has like my my pair from the hospital or whatever mm-hmm. but they're not bronze my dad my dad had a my first fish i ever caught taxidermied and hung on a on a mount so really? i have a very small bluegill that is stuffed you need to bring that in to uh, somewhere Tadpog somewhere at my parents house. oh my god please find that <laughs> all right let's see our, our theme song is moved let's see more drive link to that track from the show at how do you want to close this out dave um, like the Tarzan boys. Is okay, cool? you good with that? Yep. Okay. So until next time, <gasps> tropical. <laughs> <Capricorn>! <laughs>
It worked for the first time. I yeah. didn't know where to go with it. No, it was, well, yeah, it was weird. That's all right. We did, <laughs> we did it. So the whole time that we were recording, Tyler, I was looking on your shelf. You have what appears to be a magic deck. Is that a, is that a gorilla on that card? On this front, please on this tell fr- me that's a front Please tell me that that's a gorilla on that card. No, oh, no, it looks like that's a black deck. It's a necromancer. Ah, bummer. Well, you need a necromancer. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Ooh, Harambe magic deck. <laughs> that's just it's a green black deck. That's uh, that's it's a gorilla deck. That's all about bringing creatures back from the, the graveyard. graveyard. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, though, I feel bad about Harambe. It's sad. But not not bad enough. Oh, but it made my brain so hot I got to yawn. That's how sad I am.